It's pretty amazing to go into nature and to see something happening that's been going on for millions of years and then have an idea what might explain a little part of how all of this works. So this is a book I published earlier this year and it's called A Taste for the Beautiful. And that's a quote from Darwin. And he was asking why females had preferences for these really elaborate traits. So if we think about the origin of beautiful traits, in most animals, it's the males that are more beautiful. And the reason that they're beautiful is to attract females. So if you want to know what sexual beauty is, you usually have to go inside the female's brain in a sense. Females tend to prefer traits that are of greater magnitude. So more complex bird song, louder cricket calls, brighter colors and guppies. So what happens when animals communicate, what they usually have to do is evolve signals that make them stand out from the background. Both male and female guppies feed on orange fruit. Male guppies have orange colors. So researchers have argued that the tuning of the guppy's eyes to orange colors are not to prefer males with orange, but to find orange fruit. And then when males evolve orange colors, they're immediately noticed by females. We're in my frog colony here. We study these Tungara frogs. Their call is very complex for a frog, so their basic mating call is a whine, and it sounds like this, but then the males start competing with one another, and they add chucks on their call. And the more chucks they produce, the more attractive they are to the females, just by adding this little burp at the end of the call. So one of the reasons these calls with a lot of chucks are preferred by females is because it makes it easier for the females to find the mates. So now we have a conundrum, and that is all these males can add chucks to their calls. Females prefer these calls with chucks, so why are the males so reluctant to add chucks to their calls? There's a cost for the males to add chucks because they probably increase the rate of mortality. They're more likely to be found by bats, but on the other hand, until they die, they're attracting more females and making more offspring. So there's this conflict between natural selection that favors traits that help you survive and sexual selection that favors traits that make you more attractive. These traits really are dangerous. That, in fact, beauty kills. One, two, three, go! And the girls all get prettier at closing time. Do the girls get prettier at closing time? The psychologist did a study where he went into bars and he asked male and females to rate the sexual attractiveness of members of their gender and the opposite gender. And what they found is that their perception of beauty in the opposite sex tended to change at night. So as closing time got closer, members of the opposite sex looked much more attractive than they did earlier in the evening. And we found the same phenomenon in frogs. When female frogs go to the breeding site, they have to mate with the male that night or they just drop all of their eggs and all of that reproductive investment is wasted. So we bring females into the lab early in the evening. We give them synthetic mating calls when we play it to the females and they don't respond to them. And then we hold the females until later that night. And now we give them what were these very unattractive calls and the females respond to them immediately. So the girls get prettier at closing time in humans, and the males sound prettier at night with the frogs. Well, enjoy. Thank you very much. Yeah. So this is a bearded dragon. Bats are absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, that there you go. It's a boy, right? There we go. Thank you. 
we, humans and animals as well, rely on public information to make many decisions. I was thinking maybe we could go out sometime. No, you're a dork. <laughs> I'm in law school. Look, I'm not going to go out with you. I can't believe you'd even ask. The girl in the beginning has no interest in going out with this guy. Why didn't you call me? What? And then when she sees that another woman's very interested in him, now all of a sudden, well, this guy does appear to be, you know, very attractive, certainly worth me going out with. So, when did you want to go out? <sighs> so we wanted to know if the same thing happened in fish. <laughs> Now these fish that we're studying here are really interesting. And these are local fish, they're called mollies. And we do this very simple experiment. We put the female in the middle of a tank and then on either side of a glass partition is a male. The females will choose one of those males. She'll go over and the male will court her through the glass. Let's say she prefers male A over male B. Then if we let her observe male B, courting a female and then take the female away and now we test that focal female again and give her these same males, male A and male B. Well now she switches her preference to male B because she had just seen that male B is sexually attractive to other females so now she finds that male attractive as well. There are some important lessons, I think, for us to learn as humans by thinking about sexual beauty. And one thing that we learn is it's really important to understand how other animals view the world around them. Different animals are going to find different traits attractive because they have different sets of sensory organs, they have different architecture in the brain, and we need to understand that's going to be the same way with us, that there isn't going to be one societal norm of what everybody finds beautiful. If we have an understanding about the diversity of sexual beauty and the appreciation of sexual beauty in animals, it might open our minds to be more tolerant of diversity of people's sexual preferences in humans.